So for my stand design, this does require that I need to define a location at the stand that's representative of the rotunda by default. We can move it afterwards, but this also sets us the ability to have a local coordinate system to reference distances or coordinate pairs from a location on the apron back to this origin as a zero zero. So things in the hundreds of feet instead of having six places or you know six significant digits and two places a decimal after. Uh, once we set this, we have the possibility of defining the apron slope if we don't have a terrain. So that's important in order to be able to make sure that we're accounting for any drainage surface that may be there that causes the air, aircraft or the passenger bridge to have the wheels at different elevations depending on where they're moved along the terrain. We can adjust the apron slope to be at any angle in our drawing that represents what the pavement surface is doing. So it doesn't necessarily have to be along the X, Y coordinates we're assigning for the stand datum. Once we move to the bridge, we can review uh, if we're planning for FAA, we're certainly looking at an 8.3% or one to 12 grade. Um, some parameters here on setting the initial docking point for the bridge to the aircraft and some further allowances for multi-bridge or for conflict detection. So we're not gonna get into all those details right now. We're just gonna kind of work our way through a design rather quickly, just for demonstration purposes. I've just adjusted the passenger boarding bridge to be rotated 90 degrees. So it backs along this pier, points toward the lead-in line. And I will adjust my tunnel variant up to something that provides a greater operational range to overlap the two different lead-in lines that I may be servicing here. I might like to further grab the counterclockwise rotation limit for the bridge and pull it back around so that we're not showing it potentially sweeping into the terminal or into the adjacent stand. I need to think about adjusting the lift column that controls the vertical travel for the bridge. That's the hydraulic cylinders here that travel up and down. And again, take a look at potentially adjusting the elevation that the rotunda finished floor height will be at to mate to that fixed tunnel walkway or into the departures level of the terminal for passengers to walk into or out of the passenger boarding bridge. Um, when this rotunda center is at our origin, then the elevation or the height above the apron for the pedestal get reported identically. But if you imagine if I move this rotunda center 100 feet along the slope fall line, then based on a 1% slope, the ground will be one foot lower over here. So I would have a one foot difference between height above apron or elevation local. Elevation local being a fixed Z and the height above apron being the distance from the apron to that uh, fixed Z height. Okay, with the bridge added uh, and these parameters done, we can move forward and grab a lead in line. So we might define it or we may have some graphic in the drawing if we're catching up a digital model to a uh, a previously planned CAD drawing, or even over aerial or mapping, we can plan on top of. We'll set the tail limit for the apron. We'll move the nose limit here just a little farther forward. So these are kind of logical cutoffs on the lead-in line that prevent the aircraft from being pushed too far out. So it tails in the movement area or coming too close to the terminal, making it prohibitive for pushback tractors or other equipment to move around the front of the aircraft. Uh, you want to have that distance away. There's also the distance that needs to be uh, watched out for for fueling uh, points to terminal glass wall. We'll move past services and come to airplane parking. At this point, um, I'm using one of the advanced capabilities in AviPlan Airside Pro, which is to do an automatic uh, position for the stop line and assignment for the aircraft. So all I do here is simply go in and make a selection for multiple aircraft. I can check them on one at a time, or I can go and grab a group. So with a group, it's a, a shift and select or a control and select for individual. So I've got the range of them, 28 aircraft. When I check them on and hit select, I can choose whether or not I'd like to dock them to door one or whether or not I'd like to dock them to door two. Or in the case of Aviplan Airside Pro, there's some prioritization. So I could say I'd like to try to prioritize these aircraft to dock to L2 but allow them to go to L1 if L1 provides a better solution. So we're gonna start out by trying to dock them to door two. These are wide body, larger aircraft. And what's gonna happen is if we have any clearance issues based on what my, my limit was back under the settings for my bridge conflict analysis between the wing and engine, six feet or less, 
we're going to get some points in here that are marked with circles and we're going to get some points back in my aircraft parking tab or in my results dialog another way to take a look at it with numeric data that shows me where the distance issues are occurring okay um, when they're red it's a critical violation meaning that we're going to have a, a significant problem to the engine based on what we've allowed for so what we may want to do is sort by the column heading here that lets me see the aircraft that are showing a violation. I can hover over quickly and take a look at the status or I can go to the status column and I can see that almost all of these have bridge clearance issues to the engine other than one that has a tunnel is near the max limit under a mispark in terms of retracting or extending far enough. So in order to resolve what I might simply do with this group of aircraft is again using control or shift select the range and change their door assignment from L2 to L1. And then a number of them should go away from having warnings. Both the circles will go out of the drawing, the conflict warnings in the, the uh, column and under the results will go away. And because we're allowing automatic stop line creation and positioning, there'll be a rebalancing and the aircraft will move along the lead-in line to slightly different positions. I'm gonna save this stand. And I'm just going to go into the session manager from the design tool. Again, the heart of controlling the display for items. And what I'd like to do here is just drill down the lead in line and currently turn off all airplanes, all docked bridges for L1 and L2. So I'm basically cleaning up my stand to get a clean view of just the bridge movement area. And because we did a 777 coming in on that single path, I'm going to find my 777 300ER here. I'm going to turn on the airplane and the bridge dock to L2 and close the session manager and save the session.